Countess. Love to hear your voice. You need to do voiceovers. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> oh, can you, is there any way we can take you off speakerphone? Oh, yes. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Let me get. Okay. No, I've just been kind of waiting because I had a, a couple of interviews before. Ah, Are you there? Ah, so much better. Oh, there you go. So much better. But yes, I mean, I hear your voice. Yeah. And I'm always thinking, I'm like, Luann would, I could t- so totally hear her saying things <laughs> like, you know, tied the laundry of your life. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, working on that, working on um, getting an agent actually right now. Good for you. Yeah, I'm heading out to California next week because I, I have to get going on this whole thing. Well, I know you've been you've always been doing modeling. I have and I have and I've been working in television before and um, but this is a whole new, you know, life for me, this uh, show. And so this is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. I got to write my book, which I'm thrilled about, which is coming out April 16th. It's a book on manners. It is. It is. It's but but it's also about my life and what I've learned, you know, growing up and um and you know, meeting the count and how I became a countess and so there's stories, so it's not it's just not a straight out manners and etiquette book. It's really about my life. What did you think of The Real Housewives of Orange County? Did you watch that at all? Did you see the episode? Uh, Not really. I didn't really watch it that much. Well, I wanted to ask that because there was an episode where Tamara goes to Manners class. Right. And did did you think she got good advice? You know what? I didn't see that piece. (laughs) Okay. I didn't see that piece. And, you know, I should have seen that piece, and she should have come to me. You guys should (laughs) do something together. She throws a dinner party. Right. And she goes to this, you know, class and learns how to set a table and to do all these things. And I immediately thought of you. Right. And how was the woman who gave her the... Advice. I thought she was pretty good, but it was a lot of information on setting a table. It was very right. intimidating. <laughs> no, I make mine uh, very simple. I read a piece today on your new housewife. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't know anything about <laughs> that. I have no idea when it comes to her personal life because she doesn't really share that much of her personal life on the show. Well, I mean, it's it's quite a sexy story. She beat down her boyfriend. I know. It's quite something. I know. I know. But I just wonder how much of that was kind of self-defense. Because as you read before, she had a restraining order again. Right, right, what right. What was he doing at her house is what I'd like to know. Well, it's one of those interesting things. I mean, here you are. You're just living your life. And then the next thing you know, and this has mm-hmm. happened to you because I've read about you, you're in the page six. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> they love to exaggerate. And it's a gossip paper, you know. Do you feel like uh, any press is good press? I think that all press is good press as long as they spell your name right. <laughs> And as long as what they say isn't true. <laughs> you can't believe everything that they say, obviously, you know. Fair and, enough. And I think for Kelly it was highly exaggerated, and I think for me it was highly exaggerated, you know. Right, right, so, right. you know, I feel for her. The guy's probably a looney tune, you know. Yeah, that's a tough thing to play out in the press, that's for right. sure. But you know, as you know, that's the And risk. how he compares it to Rihanna, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like he's <laughs> trying to get some press, too. I mean, that is no gentleman. Yeah. That's all the Countess has to say. Yes, that's right. And we heard what Oprah said. Love doesn't hurt, Countess. <laughs> right. Well, love love shouldn't hurt. Yes. Love yes. shouldn't hurt. So um, when your kids were growing up watching Sesame Street, did you have to explain the distinction between the Count there and the Count, your <laughs> husband? Well, you know what? My kids really didn't grow up watching Sesame Street. We were living in Switzerland at the time. Okay. Um, so they, you know, they weren't into Sesame Street. They don't so, have Sesame but, Street in Switzerland? You know what, darling? No. <laughs> they didn't have Sesame Street in Switzerland then. And what does the Count's family think of the show? He has only one brother. Uh, his parents are both gone. I think that they would be thrilled that, that, that people in America are talking about the Deliceps once again. Good. And I think that, um, that uh, they've only been shown in a very good light. I mean, aside from the bashing that we get once in a while from, from Bethany and, and Ramona, you know, there's a scene where Ramona talks about, you know, how she could never send her daughter to boarding school. I don't expect Ramona to understand education, and she wouldn't be the first person I would go to. Well, a I lesson, let's put it that way. I had strong feelings about that episode because I was completely on your side. Someone can't make that decision for your child. No, of course not. Of course not. And, you know, it, it wasn't a forced feeding. It was Victoria who wanted to go to school. So, you know, and what people don't know is that it's very close to New York. So she's home 
most every weekend. <laughs> and who wouldn't want to go to boarding school? You know, it's, know. it seemed to me like Ramona's reasons were very selfish. She wouldn't want her totally. daughter to go because she would, you know, wouldn't have her around. Right. I know. And, and, you know, I can understand that. You know, Jill and I both say in that episode, you know, to each his own, it's a family matter. Thank gosh I love Jill. She's <laughs> such a piece of work. Isn't she? <laughs> she really is. She really is a piece of work. And she's the one who got me involved in the show. It's all Jill's fault. Oh, is that right? So she was on first and then she called you? Yes, yes. And I had just met her before that. I had um, run into her a couple of times. So I was could, couldn't get over Jill Zarin. I was like, who is Jill Zarin? And she, she just kept popping into my life. And then all of a sudden, and here I am on the show with her. That's so. That funny. was like a fate thing, you know. And and I'm, you know, I'm thrilled. I got to write my book, you know, which is coming out April 16th. And um, you know, and I get to share my story with everybody who who wrote to me a lot after season one, you know, about you know the Countess thing and and about manners and etiquette and and so. It inspired me, so I'm I'm thrilled about that. I think that's great, and I think it's more of what we need today in America. Because I think people are tired of being treated badly, and yeah. people behave badly. Yeah. So I think it's time to bring manners and etiquette back to the table. Well, good for you, Countess. I'm a huge fan of you on the show again. Thank you, got, you Mara. After you do that, you've got to do some voiceover work. Your voice is incredible. Well, maybe you can hook me up. I mean, you know what? Maybe I will. Maybe <laughs> I'll give you some pointers. <laughs> well, we'll be watching. Well, the show, and when you come to Atlanta, you must come visit us. Yeah, and so what do you what do you think of the Real Housewives of Atlanta? I should ask. When Nene came in here the first time, she scared me. I'm sure she scares me. I I couldn't watch it. I mean, I was like, you know, it was shocking for me. Yeah, but you know what? The to me, the most genuine one is Lisa Wu Hartwell. She mm. is um, a, she is really something else. Right, I mean, right. I'll be watching the second season for sure. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't miss it. But yeah, I mean, those girls. I mean, there was a big publicity blitz, and they've been in here several times. But Lisa is my favorite. I think mm. she's really driven and motivated, and um, and a genuinely nice person i think you'd like her a lot really yeah okay. i do i do okay well you have to put us together <laughs> i will i would definitely oh my god she's you guys could do that boot camp together she's yeah, well, or if they're looking for you know uh lessons on manners and etiquette you can send them my way you know what <laughs> you should do a crossover episode absolutely i'm going to get on the phone with the producers today you should do a crossover episode because that... apparently there was something on the oc where she goes to get etiquette lessons so you know they what? should be crossing the countess over you that. need to do come on now plug it right. out out. Plug it out, Countess. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you... so it's been it's been a, it's been a great it's been a great time, and you know it's just fun working with the girls. And at the end of the day, we're like this crazy family thrown together, and we bicker, but you know, in the end, uh, we're all friends. So. Well, we love watching it, and um, you're you're just a joy to talk to. And I'll be watching tonight for sure. Can't wait to see what happens in the Hamptons. Oh my God! Well, I had to get off to Ramona after she made a terrible remark about my husband <gasps> yeah you're gonna see it tonight oh my god i'm dying all right i'll be watching i can't wait it's all a, right i really look forward to it well i can't wait for your book and it's been lovely chatting with you come to atlanta soon and come visit us thank you mara i would love to all right countess take care